James, you're on. Cool. Um, welcome to the work, uh, Working Group Kate's Infra meeting, um, 11th December. Welcome to everyone, uh, to all the new members and people joining. Uh, I don't know if anyone wants to take a few seconds to introduce themselves, if they're new, or even if they're not new. Oh, I'm kind of new, so I can start. <laughs> um, I'm Fernando. I work for Onica, it's an AWS consulting company. I joined the, the channel and the, and the mailing list when uh, Tim sent out the, the call on Twitter and been waiting to, to get my hands on something since then. Cool. Welcome. I will get started if no one else is going to um, jump in. So first of all is the billing review. So that's to look over our spending on Google Cloud projects um, across all of the projects that we manage. Um, I'm not too sure who we have on the call that has, uh, who can pull those up. Tim, do you? Yeah. Uh, it's usually Tim and Justin who do this. Uh, they are not here today. Um, so uh, they might be already off on their uh, year end <laughs> vacation. Um, do you know, is that, in, is that made public yet or is that still um, only for their access? Uh, there is a mailing list and uh, the reports come to the mailing list. Uh, let me see if I can find the last report, uh, billing report. Um, Tim has also just said he's on his way um, to the meeting. Yeah, the last GCP billing report was, um, I, I don't see one which is new. Okay, let me check. Okay, the last goes, I don't see ones on, uh, more recent than 28 October. Right, same, same, as, same as me. Um, so I don't have access to the data studio stuff as far as I know. So it looks like we have to skip this for today. Um, Tim, I see you've just joined. We are looking for the billing report. I don't know if you, if oh, you're hang on. working. I think I might be. Excellent point. I don't recall seeing it recently. I do see November 13th to December 10th when I click on the link. Uh, uh, Tim, do you want to share your screen? Uh, I'm looking to see if I have it. Uh, Hold on a second. Uh, I went to the October 28th one. I clicked on the link and then I did the, like the next page thing and it started I, showing me the newer one. I see, is it not coming by email anymore? Uh, yes, no emails. Oh, well how am I supposed to learn about stuff if it doesn't end up in my mailbox? <laughs> uh, Okay, sorry, uh, then I don't have it here. Where is the old ones? Okay, L let me paste a link. You can click on that. I got, I got the old one. Yeah, I clicked on the old link and then I basically, Yep. Uh, let Maybe me paste this. it. Let's see if anybody else has access to it. Too. Meanwhile, I'll load that saved query up. Where is it? All right, so I see the billing report. Uh, but it says last 28 days. It doesn't tell me what date that range is. There we go, November 13 to December 10. Okay, let's load the same query from November 13 to December. And, all right, Cloud Console itself tells me 1,112. 
and the billing report sells me 1,121. So we could spend time investigating the $8, but it's probably, you know, the difference in the line item tallies. The lion's share going to, interestingly, cloud build. Okay, so here we have the first instance of interesting data that we feel like we should investigate. Going to cloud build, really. What is cloud build doing that is that expensive? Have any of the test infra image builds moved across to? Uh, the cluster yeah. API, the cluster API stuff has moved, but um, interesting. I wonder if we're running up that big of a bill through their stuff. There's also some stuff I think, like some mock, like SIG release moving their stuff, um, and that's a fairly large build, like cross building Kubernetes. Um, interesting, but. Okay, we should we should dig into it uh, more. Uh, do, I don't know if we want to do that right now. Um, we don't have to. Yeah, right now it might be better to do out of bound. Uh, out of band. I suppose it's just a question of who has access to check those things. I do. Need to make sure. um, yeah. Uh, does it break it down? I can see that the it's all in the high CPU 32 category. 10,000 minutes of build time to the total of almost $700. Uh, how can I break down my group by project? Here we go. Kate, staging release test. $675, everybody else's pennies. Um, Okay, do we consider this to be a problem or is this what the money is for? Anybody? Yeah, I will cross check, but I think it is what the money is for. Okay. They are, um, not, they are not trying to con us. <laughs> no, no, I, I, <laughs> I, I believe that. I, I, I wonder whether this is something we expect to see every month or only on release months. Uh, and whether we should fine tune the process and like, I don't know if the, the process at this point, uh, or why it consumed 10,000 minutes, but uh, build, like building Kubernetes requires a fairly large machine and like an hour. If you're building for all targets in CI, we build that basically continuously. Right. Okay. The, the question is, do we, are we going to see it every month or is it like every three, once every three months? I would think eventually we would want to move all of that over to DCB, the community has access to. So uh, I presume this isn't a change from pre community owned infrastructure, right? Um, ish. Uh, so right now, uh, uh, many of the builds are on Prow. Um, and instead of GCB, that's like some GKE nodes. Um, but, uh, there's some issues with that and it probably should all just use the GCB model. Um, I'm not sure how much that will change things. But I, I mean, my, my point is we were doing this work before we didn't like net increase the compute that we're spending. We just shifted which accounting bucket we put it under. Uh, right? right. And they probably ran a few extra builds to like work it out. Sh sure. Um, that's fine. My, I propose then we let it ride right now and we take a look at it again uh, next month and we see if it's, if we think it's a problem, uh, then we can have a conversation about how continuous does our continuous build need to be. Right yeah. now it's $600. This is what the money is for. So We've spent more than $600 discussing it, so. Uh, I wonder, maybe, we're well, definitely not something to go over just yet, but if we have any, dash, if we can get dashboards for this, uh, as well as kind of looking at how much we should be spending or how much we're expecting to be spending um, month on month to compare it against, so we can actually concretely say whether someone is spending too much budgets. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, we don't have any sense of how much is too much. 
Um, you can see in the billing report, page four, a breakdown by project, which I guess I should have just looked at straight away. Uh, you can see the lion's share is Kubernetes staging release. Uh, the next is uh, Kubernetes public, which is the clusters. And the next is cloud storage. Uh, we can't see your screen if you oh, you, you know, <laughs> but you can see the billing report, right? I can, sorry, uh, I can, but uh, sorry, I'm on my desktop, so I, I can't share. I can't share a screen. Okay, let me let me open it up. And we, I just pasted the link to the um, in the chat too. It's probably the I same link to, you posted before. I'm having to request access for that, but I don't know if it's just me. Okay, are so, you are you not on the Kate's Infra mailing list? Uh, I am, and I'm pretty sure I'm on the right account. But okay, let me uh, double check I that. See, uh, page four of seven. Is that what you wanted me to look yes, at? Yes, that's what I was looking at. Okay. So, two forty-three on cloud build. Oh, okay. sorry, uh, James. The uh, you have to be on Kate's Infra GCP accounting in order to see it. Uh, we should probably just make it public. I don't see a reason why we wouldn't make it public, right? Uh, Kate's Infra GCP accounting is an editor. Uh, do, you, do you see any reason that we would not? publish this information widely we're sharing it on a screen on a public recording right so yes I think we should make it publicly readable okay let's change it to uh, okay uh, oh uh, really just for the others who are on the call so this is what it looks like uh, 1,121.80 on the title page and then the daily spend we have the graph and you can see here that cloud build was the biggest one. Unfortunately, this the report was created under the Google domain, which means I can't share it with the wide world, but I can share it with our mailing list. Yes. What is our mailing list? It's uh, Kate's Infra. Okay, and this page is the GC breakdown. Uh, and a month to date by service and project. So Kate's staging release test was the biggest. And then versus previous month, still loading. Okay, so. Uh, did, uh, All right, I've, I'm sharing the doc with the entire Kate's info mailing list. So anybody who's on the mailing list should now be able to open it. Okay, thank you. Um, Sorry, Dims, you were saying. Uh, I, I was I, just reading what was on screen. <laughs> okay, yeah, staging release is two of the top four items and the other two are Kubernetes public, which both seem appropriate, right? Right, uh, and you can see that even though the cloud bill had just started, it's far outstripping uh, you know, the compute engine cost for the whole year, right? So this is this popped up just this month. Yep. Well, we knew we knew that the um, that there's real money being spent. I mean, the the uh, the credits were given uh, in the amount of three million dollars a year because we expected to spend about three million dollars a year. So uh, all of this will be noise once we turn on the scalability test. Right. Absolutely. Which will be two or three orders of magnitude more than this. So. Okay. Um, so I'm fine with this. Uh, sorry, James, go ahead. Uh, that should be enough for today, right? Sorry? Uh, is there anything else uh, we can dr dr drill into this? Uh, that's it. Right? I think it's okay for now. If anybody feels like they want to help break the report down further, um, I, I'm totally open to having more views as we get more, more signal and how we want to slice and dice it. Um, but this alone seems to be pretty useful. So if anybody wants to participate, please uh, offer to join the uh, accounting group and you'll have edit access to this report and you can then come and play with SQL. Justin will show you how to make it work. Uh, cool, getting on then, um, move on to some of the action items from last week. So we've got um, progress to AAA. I don't know if Bart's on the call actually. No, I can't. See I can. Him. I can talk a little bit about it. So, 
Uh, Bart has a we he wrote a script that creates and enables the RBAC for uh, an individual, you know, X owner uh, namespace. Um, we have activated it for GCS Web, so we created a group for managing GCS Web, created a GCS Web namespace, added a uh, an RBAC role and role binding called namespace user, which allows them to do things like list secrets but not get secrets. Um, we tested it, uh, Bart and I tested it manually fairly extensively to make sure that he can do the things he's supposed to do and not do the things he's not supposed to do. Um, the uh, only thing left then is to start applying this to all of the other services. We are missing monitoring still. We don't have cluster monitoring. We don't have um, individual app monitoring. This is something that we need to do some investigation on how to enable and what we want to get and what norms we want to set on this. Uh, but I was thinking about it just this morning on the way in. Uh, you know, I don't really have those things, truthfully, very robust for the existing services either in the old cluster. So maybe I shouldn't be raising the bar. Um, maybe we should just start moving things over. So I moved GCS Web this week. Uh, it is running now on the new cluster. In fact, I have a to-do item to turn down the old instance and um, yeah so we made, some, we made some slight progress it's actually serving a real thing now um, uh, sorry there's still an open item we need to make sure the cert manager namespace is locked down in the right way and that we don't break cert manager maybe James we uh, it, I wonder if that will need a special different permissions because it'll need to be able to create secrets um, so we'll need to we'll need to come up with a scripted way to manage that, um, and then otherwise it's like let's take the publisher bot out of that uh, testing cluster and put it into the AAA cluster. So help wanted on the publishing bot stuff. If somebody's got the expertise on publishing bot, like it's live now. We're, we we would be happy to take a PR to create a publishing bot namespace in AAA and start moving over. So I'm a little confused. Why would uh, why would we move it? I thought we wanted to turn down AAA in favor of like the permanent one. No, tri AAA is the permanent one. Okay. We want to turn down the like one that's called Dev Two or something. Well, uh, I see. Uh, is there any way to retain these later? Sorry. Is there any way to rename these? Rename clusters? Yeah. You know the you know the answer to that. <laughs> sure. Uh, no, we 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 chose the AAA name so that it didn't have any implications around zonal or regional or meaning of the cluster. It's just our very first cluster. If we want to have a second cluster, we can come up with AAB if we have a good reason to. Fair enough. Uh, so, if anybody wants to help with this, uh, I, I know quite a bit of the publishing bot uh, side. Um, so, uh, ping me. Uh, ping me. Uh, this is Dems. Tim, you had a comment about having people come on to run it. What actually needs doing to maintain GCS Web? Almost nothing. Uh, I have not touched it in months and months and months. Um, the What we would need to do realistically is set up whatever monitoring we need to convince ourselves that it's actually alive and set up alerts to buzz somebody's phone or ping to a Slack channel when it's not alive and have a couple of people who've signed up to, in the bizarre off chance that this actually happens, to respond to it. Or, you know, if we decide we're going to roll GCS Web for a new feature or something, they would be responsible for, for pushing that update. Like, just somebody who feels responsible for it. Ongoing maintenance is zero hours a week. Um, cool. And on the cert manager stuff, I'm happy to sit down and go through some of that. Um, like you say, it will need pretty um, permissive access. Um, it does require secret, pretty much get create 
list delete uh, or maybe not delete actually um, across all namespaces so um, yeah you can run it against a single namespace but right now currently not against multiple namespaces with a single daemon so it's pretty painful to run um, with a more isolated configuration do you have a recipe for like our back rules for sort of min privileged cert manager um, well, you mean like run in a single namespace sort of running? Run cert manager in a single namespace, but allow it access to all other namespaces. Like, do you, have you already written those RBAC rules or do we need to craft them from scratch? Well, they'd need adapting from the cluster ver like variants of what we have right now. Um, they are fairly well split up at the minute. So you can see by controller um, what's, what is where, uh, but we don't have any kind of like automated testing or even examples of it at the minute no that might be something to feature request though because it seems it, sensible i was just going to say if if you or somebody who knows well what the breakdown is was to try to think about what would the rbac rules for a minimum grant of permission to a cert manager install so that the, the things running in cert managers namespace could do exactly what it needs to do and nothing else i think that would be a wonderful documentation and thought process for the project um, and super helpful for us. I've opened the feature request window myself now, so I've finished writing that up after the call. Um, okay, so if there's nothing else to add, um, there. We'll go on to the promoter status. Um, so I don't know if anyone's got a status update on there. Hey, um, so that page is actually a bit out of date now. Um, I've been working, oh, this is Linus, by the way, who's speaking. <laughs> um, I've been working on a set of uh, changes around this area most recently. Just uh, less than an hour ago is the initial implementation of like the auditing uh, mechanism. Um, I CC'd uh, Tim and Justin and uh, Bart from VMware um, on it. Um, the last major hurdle uh, is basically setting up um, tests for this code. Um, all of that is described in a PR. Uh, I, I can link that um, to, I suppose, this page um, later today. Um, I will actually be uh, going uh, offline after this call because I am in Australia at the moment and it is very early in the morning. <laughs> um, that's my update. Are there any questions around this? Is anybody helping you at this point or are you still flying solo? Um, Bart is helping out with a few things, but um, this is this work that I just spoke about is mostly solo. I mean, is there uh, anything that you can carve off to give to those 75 people who showed up and are looking for things to help with? Um, right now, it's hard to imagine what I can carve out, mainly because the tech stack is so involved. Um, that is really the main uh, blocker. I mean, there are some small bugs in the uh, motor. Um, all the ones labeled like red with the critical um, prior urgency, but there, there aren't that many actually. So, um, and certainly not, none that are actually like blocking the promoter per se. Um, so, so yeah. So no. So no. <laughs> well, unless somebody already has experience with Cloud Run uh, and GCR and sending pub sub messages and setting log metrics and getting alerts on those log metrics and testing that whole thing, because that's what needs to be done. Open invite for all those people who are uh, lurking. Yeah, uh, if people are familiar with GCP, then uh, 
you could definitely help, I think, um, at least uh, even comment on the design choices. There's actually a lot of design choices that are happening uh, in my head, uh, which I've been kind of documenting on a bug. Um, let me try to find a link for the, for it. Um, I'll like make find a link and uh, paste it in the comments because it, it'll take some time to find it. But um, for example, there's things like uh, if GCR creates a pops up message saying an image was created, um, the auditor auditing mechanism will take that and verify it against a known set of manifests. And then if it's good, you know, it'll say so. If it's bad, it'll say so in the logs. Um, I've taken a design choice to just stop the pub sub stuff at that point, like as a cutoff, um, just to simplify things. Because today you can use Stackdriver to create log metrics on the uh, logging, just the pure logging messages from your program in Cloud Run. I could have, for, exa for example, um, created or s like republished messages. So you can imagine it as like a big uh, filter where you, know, you just split off the GCR state changes into a good and a bad category. But I decided not to do that because it seems to me that there's no reason why I should be creating new pubs of messages when terminating them and just uh, delegating that work of filtering to Stackdriver itself seems like like less moving parts. But you know, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe it's better to create more pubs of topics. Um, if anybody in the audience would like to comment, um, uh, please do uh, or reach out to me directly. Um, yeah. Looks like we've had someone in the comments um, or in the chat say so they'll sync up with you. Okay, great. Um, yeah, please message me directly or in the uh, Slack channel. Sure, sure, yes. Thanks very much. Um, okay, I've just pulled forward from last week's call. I wasn't actually, uh, sorry, last call, not last week. Um, the stream learning accounts topic, I wasn't actually around for this, so I don't have much context, but um, I don't know if there is anything else to add on there. Sorry, which topic? I'm looking for it. But um it's just on the 30th of october call streamlining accounts the outcome on there was submit a pr and activate the gcp account i don't know what that means <laughs> no i guess this is a notes failure i i don't have context on what that means Anybody, or maybe we'll just have to go back and look at the recording. Cool. Um, that might be one to go back to then. I mean, the only thing I can think of would be the reconciliation of uh, the um, the general accounts uh, being inside of the groups that uh, Bart was working on, but that's only a, um, a notion, basically. Cool. Um, I'll leave that then. If no one else is too sure, uh, perhaps when Bart's back, we'll have more of an idea. Um, and then the other point on there was Terraform Boscos says uh, there were no updates previously. Is this um, using Terraform to deploy and manage Boscos? Anyone? Yeah, the question. The question of Ryan Boscos is, I think, open and needs expertise. Ben, is that you, or, or were you punting that to somebody else? Uh, 
that would be Grafton now. So now that we're on the cusp of having AAA live, is it worth taking on, like is Bosco's our next topic? I guess is the question. Um, maybe, I, it, it wouldn't really make sense for it to be in AAA though. Um, Bosco's is not a secured system. No, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean it in AAA, okay. I just meant like, is it the next target for moving stuff over? Um, I mean, we can certainly move over the project pools if we're okay with saying like we're gonna have the like exist some of the existing GCP infrastructure uh, for like the CI control these new projects. Um, that doesn't really need any special Bosco's expertise because they are just GCP projects that are like added to a list of projects and some service account is allowed to access them. Um, the tricky question there is probably like how do we manage that going forward right now mostly there are just a large pool of general GCP projects that have a pretty decent amount of quota in them to do things and some robot CI account from forever ago is owner of them so that it can create and delete resources in the map. Uh, but we do at least have an owner on the Bosco's side now. Um, Jeff Grafton and his team are taking that over. Okay. Can we invite Jeff to either jump on the mailing list or come to the next meeting um, and like start, like let's just file an issue, get a plan worked out for what it is that we want to do and agree to do it. I don't think it's actually that complicated or that big of, a, of an ask at this point. Um, this seems like what the community infrastructure is for. So we just need somebody to say, this is what we need to do in, in detail. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Tag your it. Yeah. Uh, cool. Sounds good. We've got a few notes around that now. Um, so, yeah, we've got open questions from anyone on the call. So there's currently nothing on here, but if, if anyone's got anything to ask, I'll bring up. Feel free to just shout. Um, okay then. Actually, well, I have a question for Tim. If, um, you were talking about monitoring for GCS web and in general. Um, do you just want somebody to just do a POC and kind of demo that or how do you want people to go about that process? That might be a good question for people interested in monitoring Prometheus. And <laughs> Great question. Uh, so I think there's a couple of open questions. One, should we install and run Prometheus ourselves or should we use, um, should we use Stackdriver? Uh, given that it's on GKE cluster and it's integrated, I have a slight bias towards not running infrastructure I don't need to run, but I don't feel strongly. Um, the, uh, and then the second part of it is just bringing some expertise to the table and saying, how do I set up a dashboard? What are the metrics that we want to look for in a normal application? Um, basically, I, I want somebody to step up and say, I know about monitoring, I know about Stackdriver or Prometheus or both, and this is what I think we should do. So that's pretty vague, and I'm happy to talk through in more detail if, if, if you or somebody you know is, wants to step up and talk about this uh, more, more specifically. And, and to be fair, it's not just GCS web. GCS web is the first instance, but like we're going to have a half dozen or maybe 10 such applications and I would like to establish norms. I guess is the policy for the group just to like, um, you know, talk it out first and have everything planned out or is it better to just kind of like take initiative and, um, you know, build a POC and show everyone like what's possible because you know, there's no baselines currently, so I'm sure some of that has to be iterative. So I'm just wondering like what your um, 
policy or guidance on that is? Uh, I would say like talk or write about what we think we could or should do. And assuming that it's not wildly insane, we will be happy to grant appropriate permissions to somebody to go and do their proof of concept, either live in cluster or in a test space. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I guess to that end, is there any anyone who wants to talk specifically about anything ahead of putting something together now? We have another 18 minutes left on the call at least. Uh, I have one question. Uh, this is Ilce, and I'm I want to participate in that subgroup where we are talking about uh, and we want to help something related to moving easy apps from old cluster to the new one and is it is there anything that is in progress or any plans there or something that is, that will be useful for us uh in that team or will we have some separate calls about that uh we can do separate calls but i can also point you at the existing things so if you look in the kates.io repo there's a couple of directories now, the directory structure is getting a little confused, um, but there's things like artifact server and Kate's. Uh, sorry, uh, Kate's.io uh, are two of the main things that we will want to move over. I guess artifact server, I'm not sure is even in use yet. It was a, a Justin thing, uh, but Kate's.io definitely is. That's our main uh, go, go get redirector as well as all our short stuff. Um, the, all the YAML to run those is in the Kates.io repo. If somebody wants to start thinking about uh, what do we need to do to move it over in the same way, it's probably pretty easy. I just haven't looked at it yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And running off of that question, I guess it was your answer saying that those are the priorities right now, or um, where would people find a list of priorities or like, yeah, the low hanging fruit or? <laughs> That's a great question. We have a bunch of open issues, um, but I don't know that they're broken down quite as far as we probably really want them to be. Um, why don't, James, do you want to pull up the issue list? Maybe we can run a quick scan through to see if there's obvious things that are missing. Like I can, I'll look at the old cluster while we do it and make sure that there's an open issue for, for each such topic. How's that sound? Uh, cool. And in fact, looking at the old cluster, there's a lot less than I thought there was right now because we're end of life a bunch of stuff at the same time, so. I just filed an issue against you, that's me. Cool, cool. Um, let's see if, uh, let's see, publishing bot. Okay, so publishing bot is one. Oh, that's GoDeps. Uh, do we have a separate issue just for publishing bot? Uh, I don't think we have one. Okay, so we should open and let me do this. I'll do it right now. Uh, issues. Uh, all right, so we want to open a publishing bot. General, sorry, we have that multi layer thing. I will open another issue for. I'll, I'll open them after the meeting. We won't do them live, but I'll just keep notes. Publishing bot. Um, Kates.io, what else? We have uh, kubeperf. Does anybody know if this kubeperf thing is still running? I think it might not be. Anybody know what that, <laughs> context on what that was in the old cluster? All right, uh, I'll figure out who that is. Uh, and Spartacus is dead, and I think Velodrome is dead also. Ben, do you know? That was an Antoine thing. Uh, Velodrome is still kind of a thing. Um, we would like 
to, or I believe the plan is to replace it with some new stack. Um, I'm not overly familiar with it. Okay, so Velodrome might be a thing, or it might not. I'll, uh, I'll file an issue on it anyway, and if we don't need to do anything, then we don't need to do anything. It'll be an easy one to close. Um, so those are the three things that we want to move out of old clusters right now. Uh, if we did those three, we could literally turn off the old cluster, the, the, what we call the utility cluster here. Uh, I know there's a second cluster running somewhere that I don't run huh, that we'll need to look at. Um, and then there's the stuff that Linus is doing, which I don't think needs any in cluster stuff. Right, Linus, are you still here? Yes, yeah, sorry, what was the question? Is there anything that you want to run with the promoter stuff in the AAA cluster? Um, eventually, in the long term, but not right now, no. Okay. Um, there was the issue of the auditing stuff, which I saw got merged. Um, we wanted to, I don't know if Hippie's here, um, we wanted to automate the audit so that it would run at least periodically uh, and mm -hmm. produce a report and uh, show us you know, what had changed in our backspace. So I'll file a separate issue for that. Audit. Um, and what else do we want to move? Artifact server, I don't think is actually running anywhere yet, so we can leave that. Um, DNS, we had talked about automating DNS. Um, I don't know if we're ready for that or not yet. Like having the DNS bot respond to approved polls. So Somebody the last, can tack yeah, the last three times I ran, um, everything was fine. The only issue was when we switched from Python 2 to Python 3, we didn't want to run it uh, without actually manually checking first. So that was the only thing that I can think of. Other than that, if it's just configuration changes, I think uh, we can just uh, do those things for sure. We did actually have some issues with it with that switch, but there was a follow up PR file that that's on now. That's what I meant, Ben. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'll file an issue. I'll file an issue on, uh, and I'll mark these all as sort of actionable help wanted. Um, and uh, is it worth running through the rest of the open issues? There's 46 open. Um, making, oh boy. Some of these have PRs, I know. Yeah, I was suggesting in the chat, maybe we should start thinking about putting labels relating to the component um, yes. that we're talking about. <laughs> that will probably need some changes to the test infra repo just to get those labels added. I, I guess this is under label sync. Yeah. That should be an easy, good first issue. And honestly, there's some of these issues that look like they would be actionable with a little bit more information. Um, so maybe we should take the last 10 minutes offline to sort of individually run through these issues and make sure that they're as actionable as they can be at the time being uh, and open up any other, sorry, I'm reading, but, uh, open up any other issues that we think we're missing. Uh, yeah, I will open up a late, uh, an issue about the label, um, about getting some new okay. area labels added. Yeah. Great. Um, and Linus, I'll tag you with the, the issue, but you don't need to do it now because uh, I know it's like you know, the middle of the night. Uh, any issues around GCR or backup or promoter, um, can you make sure those issues are as actionable as they can be for people who aren't you? Uh, sure, yeah. But, but you know, tomorrow's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. 
sorry, usually I would do this before the meeting, but I just uh, calendar screw up this morning. Um, so if we're okay, I'd love to take the last 10 minutes and go do that right now before I forget. Sounds good to me. Yep, sounds good yep. to me. Sounds good. Uh, thanks James, very thanks much. for running the meeting. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, yeah, worked out all out in the end. Thanks for the help at the start as well. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.